In order to get good at something, you have to be comfortable being bad at it at the beginning. Oh, I'm being an emotional person right now. It's very basic, but also beautiful and Grammy worthy. We need to talk. First of all, good morning. How are you? Good, good, cool. Okay, stop. It's my turn now. A lot of people have been asking me why I only post once a month as opposed to 40 times a day understandable and today i'm gonna tell you the real reason why i feel creatively unfulfilled when i started this channel it was kind of a personal creative challenge i think youtube is a great outlet for people who want to express themselves and might struggle to do so in real life as well it is a great way to experiment with communication styles but what i've been doing on youtube has not being fulfilling. I love watching commentary videos, but then I realized that I don't actually enjoy making commentary videos as much as I thought I would. Commentary, especially pop culture commentary that involves a certain level of social commentary, is emotionally draining. But I didn't really address the problem for a while because, you know, views, money, success. Get your ass a motherfucking job, Charlie. But I'm thirsty now. I'm thirsty for joyful creativity. So I have decided that I was gonna go on a journey to find creative fulfillment. And you're coming with me. <sighs> okay, now that we're back in the office, here's the plan. I'm gonna test drive a variety of creative hobbies and rate them. This is gonna be a series, it's not gonna be just one video. My goal is to try new things that I'm not familiar with and find out if making the stuff is as fun as it is to consume it. And the first hobby we're gonna try this week is gonna be... I don't... I don't know why I'm making it sound like you didn't read the title. Music production! Ayy! Now I would start doing it now, but I know it doesn't look like it, but it's actually getting pretty late here. So I'll see you tomorrow morning, which to you is going to be like in a few seconds. Good morning. Let's do this. Part one of our curriculum is going to be setting a goal. I think for everything, every time you try to learn something, the most important part of achieving a goal is it's to know what the goal actually is. We know that the biggest goal here is to find a creative hobby that I enjoy and makes me feel fulfilled and not depressed. But what's the smaller goal here? I think with music production, my goal is going to be to make a song. I don't know what kind of song. It could be a loop. We may end up with a loop. But that is still not... That is not failing. That will still fulfill the goal. The goal here is to make something that you can listen to and be like... That's cute. So yeah, short song or a loop, something that's quickly achievable because we have no time right now. We are on a deadline. We're not on a deadline. I'm lying to you, but I just want to do other things too. So step two, what are the tools that we're going to need for this? Your girl came prepared. We're trying to make music, so we need an instrument. And um, I don't play any instrument. I mean, I played like the recorder at school, like most people. I had some piano lessons at one point and like guitar lessons too but i haven't touched like any of these instruments since like dinosaurs disappeared so this is gonna be our main instrument now it looks like a piano but that's actually called a midi keyboard and anyone who knows about music or anything relating to it is gonna be like i don't know what a fucking midi keyboard is thank you but if you don't a midi keyboard is how do i explain that when you're trying to make music on your laptop, you can install virtual instruments on your laptop and then play them with the MIDI keyboard. That's what a MIDI keyboard does. It doesn't have it doesn't have sound coming from it right out of the box. You have to plug it into your laptop and then you get to play the virtual instruments. Wow, I can't believe I managed to explain something. And obviously we need the virtual instruments and the virtual instruments will be played on what's called a DAW or a DAW or a DAW. We're gonna call it a DAW. I don't know if that's the official pronunciation, but if it's not, why? I'll be using Ableton Live 10. I bought this thing like two years ago on a huge discount. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting into music production as a beginner, you should not buy this at full price. Girl, don't do it. It's expensive. It is time 
help us tap three. Getting started. Now you may look at your DAO and think, what the hell is going on? And you know what? I have no idea. So I would suggest that the first thing I should do is watch a tutorial on how to use this DAO and then, you know, take notes and then we'll see. It's with the confidence of an only child that I went on to learn how to use the basic features of Ableton Live. The tutorial I watched was a 16 minute long video by Collective Intelligence. I chose this one because I have no patience, but also because I realized that if it's only 16 minutes long, chances are the person is only going to focus on the most important features of Ableton Live, which is what I'm looking for. The one thing you don't want to do is overwhelm yourself with too much information at once. I don't think you need to know everything about a software before using said software. All you need to know is how to use the very basic functions. You'll learn everything else when you start using it. This is the approach I had when I was learning how to edit videos, and so far it's going well. My videos are edited, my laptop has not exploded, and I still haven't been disowned. Okay, phase one accomplished. I know how to use Ableton now, sort of. It looks like a lot of the shortcuts are very similar to the shortcuts for video editing software, like DaVinci Resolve, so it might be easier than I thought. I now know how to use my DAO, but I don't know how to use, like I don't know how to make good music. How do I make good music? So now I'm gonna look for someone who can teach us how to make good music. I googled how to get started music production and found a video of his called Beginner's Guide to Music Production 2018. But there's also a video which is slightly, slightly shorter by Andrew Huang called How to Get Started Making Music. And you know what we're trying to do? We're trying to get started making music, so... To be honest with you, I already knew who Andrew was. I found this channel after I frantically googled why have I lost 50% of my hearing out of nowhere? That time I woke up and lost 50% of my hearing out of nowhere? It turns out Andrew had a similar experience and made a video about it. My hearing is doing okay now, but... Andrew is telling us to read the software manual. No! Why would I want to read a manual, Andrew? Have you seen what manuals look like? If there's one thing my brain hates with a passion, it's reading manuals. That and pulp and orange juice, why would anyone want bits in their juice? Just eat an orange, fam. While this video didn't really address the pulp and juice situation, it did highlight some pretty hard truths about the obstacles I'd be facing later on. You know what? He just said I should expect my music to be completely crap at the beginning. And to this, I would like to say, when's it gonna be like this? See, the problem here is I think a lot of us have a hard time learning things because in order to get good at something, you have to be comfortable being bad at it at the beginning. That's also something Beyonce said in her Netflix special. And you can see that Beyonce is right because Beyonce is Beyonce. We have made progress. When you're starting to learn something by yourself, it's hard to tell where to get started and also what you need to learn when you don't know anything about what you're trying to learn. What I learned from Andrew's video is that music theory seems to be a big thing. Apparently music theory can help you be more flexible and actually have an easier time creating the music rather than going from scratch without any knowledge of music theory. My brain tells me that I should learn music theory then, but my heart, my heart tells me ain't nobody got time for that. And yet, I had to do it. I did it for the Vine. As someone who knows nothing about music other than every single detail BTS was willing to disclose in their interviews, I really needed to step up my game and at least get some basic knowledge about chords, scales, tones, semitones, acetones. Music theory is like math. It's important and helpful to understand the logic behind the way things work, but the more you learn, the less it makes sense. I learned a lot of new terms and I felt very intelligent for a few minutes, but that was until... I just learned about the concept of the circle of fifth, the circle of fifths, the circle of fifth, the circle of fifths, the circle of fifths. And I think we're gonna stop here and get back to it tomorrow because brain cells sometimes overheat and no longer are able to make connections in certain situations. And I think that's what's happening right now. It's been three days since the last time I recorded. In these three days, 
I watched a few music production videos. I watched tutorials. Do I remember them? No. But I feel like today is the day for step number four. Just do it. I'm not gonna be able to learn everything I need to know about music theory in a short period of time. I'm a firm believer in learning while doing, so that's what we're gonna do. For our song, we are going to start by making a song Now you may think, oh girl, that's very slow. Yeah, I'm being an emotional person right now. This is gonna be an emotional chord progression. It's gonna be so beautiful, you have no idea. Next step. Oh, the emotion, the beauty. I could write music for, PT for PTSD. Well, I can't, not yet, but Beyonce called me if you need help. Once again. It's very basic, but also beautiful and Grammy-worthy. Whoa! Such an airy sound. Ew. Disgusting. Oh, that sounds very cute! I know that it sounds disgusting right now, and that's kind of cute. Trust the process. I understand that it sounds not great right now, but we are on the right path. Die kenn ich nicht. It's been a few days since the last time I recorded. A lot of things have happened. I cut my hair. I celebrated my birthday. I got a new camera. And I think it's time to wrap this up. On the first day of actually making music, I was pretty hyped. I was ready to change my career completely, form a band, go on tour, claim my Grammys. But then day two happened. I feel slightly stuck. I didn't film day two, but it was very chaotic. I was trying to make my song sound more iconic and less devastatingly wrong but I realized that my knowledge of how to make music was very limited and also came to the conclusion that Beyonce and Andrew were right your first song is very likely to sound like it's coming right out of a tuna can let me just show you what I made So like, yes, I could still get a Grammy nomination based on the current standards, but am I happy with it? Would I make this my debut song and finally introduce myself to the world as the artist formerly known as Tina Sao? Debatable. Was this enjoyable? Would I do this again? 
I would say that making music is still pretty fun. I think the first day that I started was so fun that I completely forgot about everything around me. That being said, the learning curve... There is also the fact that I felt like making music, especially when you're still learning, feels very isolating. I already have a very isolating hobby with editing videos. So do I want to add more isolation to my isolation? But I'd definitely do this again, just not on a regular basis, where I'd be like focusing on this every day for the rest of my life. So, for these specific reasons that I just mentioned, music production gets a 3.26 out of 5. Maybe I should start singing instead. And be careful when you don't me. Stop it. Get some help. If you would like me to try something specific, now is your time to shine. Let me know in the comments and I will write the ideas down somewhere. See you in a week or two, unless I have another existential crisis. Mm -hmm.